This is made by mommy.com's crazy daisy tutorial. And frankly, you've got to be crazy to try this design. It takes two looms. And in order to complete this circle, it requires looming backwards half the time. So if you are crazy like I am, and you wanted to know how I made that flower that's been in my banner for some time, well then here we go. To make the crazy daisy, you need two looms. You also need, the first time you do this, four colors of rubber bands. You can make this ultimately with just a single color or two colors or whatever combination of colors you want but it will be much more confusing. If you use four colors, you'll have an easier time following these instructions. So learn them once with four colors and then go crazy getting creative with other color combinations. You need a color that is going to extend out as I have the white here, a color that's going to be your loops around, and then two that are going to be your outer petals. These are the same exact pattern, just very different themes. I tried to make one to represent winter and one to represent spring. And we're gonna make another one right now with a completely different color set. But let's get started. To start, you need to set up your loom like this. I have five rows across and I have the pegs staggered as a v-shape you'll see that i have the blue pieces extending off to the side a bit here that's for extra stability you can set them up whatever makes you feel the most confident that this whole structure is going to stay together i have a chart online for the layout of rubber bands it is crazy just like this daisy i will have this available at madebymommy.com so you could print it out to follow along, but because of the detail required in this design, I'm not gonna show the chart at the same time. I wanna really zoom in to give you the best view of my work. So here we go. First color that I'm going to use. Place straight in the center of my five peg configuration. Switching colors, a single rubber band up on the diagonal to the right. And then up on the diagonal to the left from the center. And now I'm going to follow around what will be the outside circle of the flower. So what I'm using as pink is what I have as gray here. If I seem to be going too fast for you to follow along, I suggest two things. First, that you print the chart from madebymommy.com because all of these rubber bands are numbered on the chart so you'll know exactly what to do. And I also suggest that you hit pause and catch up. That is the best way to follow along is to watch a step, hit pause and then repeat it until you get it right. So you'll see, let me take that one off, I just placed a second rubber band over that peg. So we went first with one color here, switched colors, and went here and here, well, I'm sorry, we went here first, then here and around in the circle, going over this one a second time. That is numbers one through 14 on the chart. And now we switch back to the same color we used first to go forward, skipping a peg, skipping a peg on the diagonal, and 
We're going to build the structure from the outside in and then loop it from the inside out. And switching back to the color you used for this circle, we're going to make one in that direction and then go all the way around. Having trouble grabbing my rubber bands. Slippery fingers. Okay, and then we're, again, we're going to put a second band over that position. This is what your loom should look like. But because this daisy is crazy, we are not done. We've got more rubber bands to put on. We are going for rubber band number 28 now from the chart. 29 and so on this design takes inspiration from Suzanne's rainbow blooms and from the starburst pattern but it's different because it works all the way around in a circle instead of starting at one point and traveling up the sides. The result is really pretty. So now taking the second color that we used, we need to create a cap band in the center. I'm going to take that and wrap it around three times. This, for those of you that have done my snowflake video, is the basic structure of my snowflake charm. We are now going to add what will be the loose petals on the outside of the Crazy Daisy. I'm going to use blue and green. Take two at a time and place them together. For a consistent look, I like to always make sure that the same rubber band is on top. And keep on going around and around. I'm really looking forward to seeing this daisy made in all sorts of different colors and as you finish your projects please do post pictures of them on my Facebook page or on Instagram um, I love to see what you come up with um, so we're almost around all the way again and this one we don't go twice on this loop we just want a single layer so that is all of the rubber bands for your crazy daisy. I'm going to rotate my loom and for those of you who have printed a chart I'm also going to rotate my chart. We're going to take these rubber bands off in the exact opposite order that we put them on. Skipping the ones that we just added on the outside for the loose petals because those don't get hooked, those remain loose. Starting in the center, you remember with the cap band was number 34. So we're going to hook first rubber band number 33, which is the one going up in this diagonal. So we go in with our hook, reach back to catch that top band. Sometimes you'll want to put a finger here just to make sure that center cap doesn't pop up and place that to the side. And we're now going to repeat in a circle, taking each of the rubber bands out 
and placing them to match their other halves. So this will be familiar to you if you've done a starburst or you've done a rainbow bloom, uh, this pattern, although it finishes with perfect symmetry um, with each of these looking the same. So from there, we are coming to the top and going over on the diagonal to the left of that innermost circle. This is hooking backwards. Uh, so I reach in to get that pink and bring it down. Be cautious on this one because remember there are two there. You only want to take that first rubber band to the side. You'll see there's still another one underneath there. We're going to get that last. Grabbing just the rubber bands in that order, just one at a time. I'm now up to rubber band 22, which goes to the left. And now I'm looking for rubber band 21, which is over here. And I'm going to bring that to the right. And this is what the center should look like. Working out the next layer rubber band 20 on the chart, diagonal left, and in here, and to the bottom, Rubber bands 17, this is 16, and up to the top. It's hard sometimes to put into words what I'm doing, but you're watching me in real time hook this together. So if you pause and watch again, you should be able to follow along. So we've now hooked all the way to the outer edge. We're now going to reach the color that is on the bottom. The top two rubber bands, if you remember, they're going to be loose to make the petals of the flower. We're hooking together this rubber band down here that for me is pink. And we're going to start with rubber band 14, which is in this position and goes down to the left. We want to get the top pink rubber band. And you'll always get good feedback. You'll know you've done right when you see that beautiful V shape. If it's distorted, then you've probably pulled on the wrong rubber band. Here also you want to be cautious because there's that second pink rubber band. Make sure you get that top one. Pull it through the center and down on the diagonal. Oh no, more backwards hooking. We can do it. Just pull them back until you see the one you want. And pull it up. You can handle this. I know you can.
keep going around. Phew. And now we get to hook forward again. What a relief. And coming back to the top and now remember there's one last rubber band to do that's the rubber band that goes from this peg back to the center which makes it such a pretty circle and now we are ready to latch this together what we need is to grab that one for me purple rubber band through the center of all of these rubber bands I'm going to go in this way, pull back with my hook, so I have just one purple rubber band. Now before I tie this off, I want to free those outside petals so that they don't get smushed by the latch. Fortunately, because I used four different colors, I know exactly which ones those are. This blue and green pull gently over that latch and on this side the blue and green again pull gently over the latch and then you're ready to secure this together take one rubber band through the center of the other and pull tight and that is what is going to keep your whole crazy daisy together and will also serve as a loop if you'd like to wear it as a pendant. And we're ready to take it off the loom. Hooray to all of you who have stuck with me through this very desi challenging design. Uh, this though, I gotta tell you, whenever one of my girls wears one of these as a necklace, this is what people always ask about more than any of my other charms is this particular flower. It's really very beautiful. Uh, and people know that it was not easy to make. I'll pop that all off and give it some adjustments. And there you have it. The Crazy Daisy Charm from madebymommy.com. I hope that you enjoyed making it with me and I hope that yours came out well and if it didn't, I hope that you are willing to try again. And if you liked this video, please click my name below, Made By Mommy. You will be brought to other videos that I've made on the Rainbow Loom, including the Baby Duckling the panda face, and the turkey, if you're into animals. Thank you again. Please consider subscribing to be notified when more new videos are posted. Click like, comment to let me know what you'd like to see me do next. Thank you again, and happy looming from madebymommy.com.